I did a full comparison between the Asus 6Z and the OnePlus 7 last month. Number one, I had used the phone for like five days. Number two, I came across a few bugs in the software. It wasn't an ideal experience. So one month later, I decided to swap my SIM to this phone again. And since then, I've been noticing a few things that I'd like to share with you guys. Before we begin though, let me introduce myself. My name is Ashwin Sundar. This is Technology Talk. In case you find this video helpful, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Guys, in case you decide to get this phone, check out these skins from our sponsor Capes India. They look really cool and offer a bit of protection by preventing scratches without adding any noticeable bulk or weight to the phone. There are a lot of designs. They are also available for many other phones as well, including budget phones like the Redmi Note 7 Pro, Realme 3 Pro and so on. So do check them out, link in the description. You can use the coupon code TJOK to get 10% discount on your purchase. Let's first talk about the design and the build quality of the phone. That's the major selling point. It's really fascinating to see to what extent brands are willing to go to make way for a true edge to edge display. And then there are brands that take us for granted. Asus though have done something crazy, crazy in a good way. Uh, there is no water drop notch, no pop-up camera, no sliding mechanism. Instead, we get to use the rear camera as a selfie camera. This is like the smartphone version of, uh, you know, getting an erection. Now, come on, don't tell me you never thought of it. I'm just being honest here. Anyway, it looks cool. It's not gimmicky. It's extremely functional. Now, this is what I had to say about this mechanism in the other video, the comparison video. In terms of durability, I have my doubts. It's very different from the pop-up mechanism of the OnePlus 7 Pro, K20 Pro, etc. Like when I was testing the cameras, a couple of times in the past few days, I had the phone close to something, something like a table. So while the camera was closing, it accidentally got hit. And several times while selecting a picture on WhatsApp, Telegram, etc. Like those times when I didn't intend to click a selfie, the camera still did flip out. So personally, I feel the pop-up mechanism is safer in the long run at least. Now, I still stand by what I said. Uh, the pop-up mechanism feels a lot safer, but I can say that now I'm less paranoid about the flip-out mechanism because I used it for a few more days now. And while some of those still happened, those minor accidents, it didn't really seem like it was gonna fall apart or something, unlike India's economy. It's quite rigid, it's made of liquid metal in fact, and it can also retract itself if dropped from a height of 1.5 meters or above. Although I noticed it retract even when dropped from a height of one meter. And anyway, I'm completely okay being paranoid because of the crazy good things this mechanism can do. Well, number one, you can use the 48 megapixel camera to click selfies. Of course, it's a lot better than any other selfie camera out there. And the results speak for themselves. Just look at the quality. It's amazing. Super sharp and great dynamic range. These are the best selfies I've ever seen, at least in this price range. And let's also not forget that the second camera, the ultra wide camera, is also available for selfies. It's super handy, especially when you wanna click group selfies. They look really good. So yeah, the quality of selfies is worth the little bit of risk involved. But guys, the thing is, in case the camera glass gets cracked or gets damaged in some way, you will have to spend around 8,000 rupees to get it fixed from Asus. A 6 user actually tweeted about the price. It was shocking. I expressed my disappointment and Asus said they would work on it. And then the user posted another tweet stating that he was offered a discount. He had to spend around 6,000 rupees, which is still a lot of money. Even the display of most phones costs only around 6,000 rupees. But in this case, it's just a piece of glass covering the camera. So this is something you need to keep in mind before buying the phone. Now the ASUS 6Z is proof that you don't need a dedicated depth sensor to click portrait mode images. Come on, it's 2019. I'm tired of seeing brands do it. Just for the sake of saying, hey, look, we've got triple cameras. Hey, look, we've got quad cameras. Just replace it with an actually useful camera 
and everyone will be happy. So on that front, I really appreciate Asus. The portraits look fine. It doesn't support HDR though, that's one con, but the regular pictures are nothing short of amazing. They have just the right amount of contrast in them. The dynamic range is really good. And the best part is the color reproduction. It's really accurate. And of course you get a bit of natural background blur because of the shallow depth of field because the camera sensor is huge. If you don't understand what I just said, please watch this video. I've explained everything in very simple terms. So yeah, the pictures turned out really good. Even under low light, it performs reasonably well. The images are definitely usable, but I expected a bit more from the camera, especially the night mode is not that great. It needs some work. There is quite a bit of noise in the images. But given that it's a software technique, we can expect ASUS to fix it via an update. The 6Z can shoot 4K at 60fps. Of course, EIS or electronic image stabilization works only in 4K 30fps mode. And it's really good. Footage is super stable. The quality of videos is good too. Now back to that flip camera. There are a few tricks you can make use of. Like you can change the angle while shooting videos without having to move. And then there is the motion tracking feature. You just need to tap on the subject and the flip camera makes sure it focuses on the subject by moving accordingly. And then it also helps capture panorama shots without any device movement. Overall, I'm really impressed with the cameras, especially selfies and those few tricks that we just talked about. No other phone can do those things. But if you want to know how this phone compared to other phones in this segment, here's a full detailed camera comparison between the 6Z, the OnePlus 7 and the K20 Pro. Okay, I just realized we didn't complete the design and build section of the review. I get distracted a lot. Anyway, the 6Z has Gorilla Glass 6 for display protection and Gorilla Glass 3 for the back panel. I think Gorilla Glass 1 and 2 were out of stock. I don't know. Anyway, liquid metal for the camera unit is definitely reassuring and the back panel also houses the fingerprint scanner, the traditional one. It's not cutting edge technology like in display scanners, but it works really well. It's both reliable and fast. But let me know which one you prefer. Here's a poll. Now the phone feels premium in hand. It's actually 9.2 millimeters thick and weighs 190 grams. But trust me, it's really ergonomic. The edges of the back panel are curved superbly and the weight distribution is also even. So it doesn't feel like a thick phone or a heavy phone. It's really good. Asus have done a great job here. The button placements are also fine. They are quite sturdy too. And yes, the button at the top is what Asus calls the smart key. There are three different actions it can perform. And the best thing is they are customizable. These are my customizations. So basically you get the functionality of uh, something like OnePlus's alert slider, plus the ability to set two more actions to the button. Small things like this make the user experience a lot better in my opinion. It's not just the smart key. Asus have also provided notification LED, FM radio, and a dedicated micro SD card slot. All of which are really hard to find on similarly priced phones these days. And other basic stuff like dual band Wi-Fi, carrier aggregation, GPS all worked perfectly fine. No issues there. Oh, and let's not forget the headphone jack. It supports high-res audio. Now, to feel the difference, you need dedicated high-res earphones and Asus provides them as well in the box. They sound really good. Now, remember the music files that you play must be in FLAC format, not MP3. MP3 audio is not high-res. It's not that detailed. That's it, even MP3 music sounds really good. Speaking of music, let's also talk about the stereo speaker setup. It gets really loud, but at full volume, you hear crackling sounds. The quality is not the best. The same crackling behavior can be found in the earpiece as well. It becomes fine when you turn down the volume by two or three points, but in a noisy environment outdoors, you're forced to set it to full volume. Things actually got a little better after the recent updates, but I still wish it offered even better audio. Uh, it's not a deal breaker. If you like everything else about the phone, you can still buy it. Okay, it's high time we talk about the display. Any phone that's priced around or over 30,000 rupees should have an AMOLED display. That's something everybody expects invariably. Now, Asus haven't done that. They've gone for an IPS LCD panel, but it's a really good LCD panel. Of course, it doesn't have those super deep blacks unlike an AMOLED display, but it covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut, 
which means the color reproduction is great. The resolution is full HD plus and it has support for HDR as well. Now here is a comparison between the OnePlus 7 and the Asus 6Z's displays. You can see that both are almost equally good. The panel also gets really bright, it was convenient enough for outdoor usage. From movies to games, this display handles everything really well. Speaking of games, the 6Z excels at that as well. PUBG gameplay is smooth and responsive and it's not surprising given that it's the Snapdragon 855 chip that's powering the phone along with 6 or 8 GB RAM. So even at the maximum graphic settings, which is HDR plus extreme FPS, the gameplay is quite good. There is no noticeable lag or frame drops. During long usage sessions, I'm talking 1 hour, 2 hours, you might notice some minor lag but it's normal and there are no heating issues. Asus have done a lot on the software side of things as well. You have this thing called Game Genie which offers a bunch of useful settings to enhance your gaming experience. You can even live stream to YouTube or Twitch. Now while a lot of people say this skin is close to stock Android, I feel it's actually even closer to Oxygen OS. It kind of follows the same formula, a near stock Android experience plus some necessary useful features. Like there is a screen recorder with a lot of options, a lot of gestures and shortcuts to launch apps without turning on the display and more. Now remember in the beginning I said I found a few bugs uh, when I used the phone a month back. I wasn't able to take a screenshot in many instances, few apps just crashed. It was a little annoying but after the recent update I didn't face any of those issues. So not just for gaming, even for day to day tasks like checking emails, browsing the web, checking out Twitter and Instagram feeds, watching videos on YouTube, Netflix etc, the 6Z delivers. Now this good performance is backed up by a huge 5000mAh battery. That's much higher capacity than what any other phone in this segment offers. Battery life hasn't improved or deteriorated after the recent update. On medium to heavy usage, the 6Z got me through one whole day with 40 to 50% charge left. You can get through one more day with that remaining 40% if you use battery savers and avoid gaming. Uh, note that I had two SIM cards, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on all the time, so that was the kind of usage. The 6Z supports 18 watts fast charging, which is definitely not the best in the market, especially since the phone has a huge battery, it takes quite some time to charge the phone. It takes over 2 hours. Now, the verdict. At 32,000 rupees, you get a really good camera package, great main camera and ultra wide camera, both on the front and the back, a great innovative design amazing battery life and those minor stuff like the notification LED, micro SD slot, high res audio, high res earphones in the box, etc. This is undoubtedly a great phone for the price. If you want to know how it compares to the OnePlus 7, here is a full comparison video. Another awesome phone in this segment would be the Redmi K20 Pro at just 28,000 rupees. While trying to choose between these three phones, my advice would be don't look at the big stuff like display, performance, gaming etc. Because they are all almost equally good on all phones. The differences are just minimal, be it performance, be it the display. I mean all of them are 1080p, all of them support HDR. Instead, look for some specific things you would want in a phone. Like say, think about a notch free display, micro SD card slot, ultra wide angle camera or telephoto camera, the quality of loudspeaker, battery life. You get the idea right? Think about these before deciding which one to buy. If you still have any question, please post it in the comment section, I'll get back to you. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to Technology Jock and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching, for the moment this is Ashwin Sundar saying goodbye.